Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Benjamin Carano and for those of you who don't know me, you'll just have to subscribe and get to know me. And for those of you who do know me, welcome back to the channel. So I promised a lot of you guys a while ago that I would be doing a video comparing a CVT torque converter and a centrifugal clutch. Uh, for those of you who watched my series on building a motorized bike with the 120cc Honda GX engine, you will know that in part three, I decided to switch from using a centrifugal clutch to using the CVT torque converter. So today's video will basically be talking about why I chose to do that, um, my opinions on each one, which one I think is better, the benefits and disadvantages to each one, and I will also just start out by giving you some background on how they work and their physical differences and properties for any of you who don't know how they work and want to learn a little bit of that before I go into my opinions and the differences. All right, so starting out with a centrifugal clutch, I apologize that I was not able to find a nice animation video uh, to explain it to you guys better that wasn't copyright free. So I'll do my best to explain the mechanics of the little one here that I have. So starting out, there is a hole that goes over the shaft of the motor and that is attached to this little inner disc that spins inside of this outer plate and this outer plate is fixed to a sprocket that basically attaches to the chain spins the back wheel so first the shaft of the motor goes through this hole and as the rpms of the motor increase there are springs and ceramic plates in here that will expand with the centrifugal force and then make contact with this outer plate and as the RPMs increase, that contact, that centrifugal force becomes stronger and stronger. And eventually it will be kind of like a manual clutch where it will start spinning this outer disc, which will spin the sprocket and drive the wheels. So I know it's kind of hard to see here, but you can see some of the springs and the ceramic plates there that basically will expand, make contact with this outer disc and spin the sprocket as the engine RPMs increase. So now moving on to the CVT torque converter, I'll just be explaining the mechanics of the one I used on the bike. Again, this is a 212cc Predator engine torque converter. And basically the way this works is that there are two pulleys and a belt that goes between the two. And basically there is kind of a force that acts outward rather than out toward the edges. It kind of increases the thickness of the pulley in the front here. So as the engine RPMs increase, this pulley basically has a little disc on the back side that will squeeze in toward the belt. And the belt has a little wedge here. So as that pulley squeezes in toward the belt, it will tighten the belt. And that will basically create the friction that will be on this pulley to drive this pulley. And this pulley, you might be wondering what all this stuff is on the front of it these are basically springs that when this pulley increases the size and tightens the belt this pulley will basically react to the tension of the belt which will sink in farther and basically make this pulley move out and decrease the size of the radius of this pulley so the advantage the first advantage to having a torque converter here is that it actually changes the ratios of the sizes of the pulleys so that it not only gives you more initial torque to start out with, but it will also increase the speed of your bike as the engine RPMs rev a lot faster. So I know this is kind of hard to explain, uh, so I did find a nice copyright free video that I will just go through with you guys really quick. So here's a model of a centrifugal clutch and the green pulley would be connected to the motor. And as the motor RPM increases, so does the radius of the green pulley and the blue pulley radius decreases, giving you a mechanical advantage. Now I'm going to talk about my initial thoughts on the two and why I chose to switch from the centrifugal clutch to the torque converter. Uh, so the original plan was to go with the centrifugal clutch because I had built a little gas scooter before that had a centrifugal clutch and it was absolutely great. And it lasted like over four years without having to replace that clutch. And I was really rough on it. I mean, this was just like the first kind of motor toy I built. And it was, 
it was just great. It lasted amazing and just nothing wore out. And so I was like, great, I had good luck with this centrifugal clutch. I'll just go with another centrifugal clutch on the bike and hope that it works the same. So the first thing that made me kind of skeptical about going with this torque converter, I knew my options were the centrifugal clutch or the torque converter or a manual clutch. So the manual clutch was just way too expensive and there was this company I really liked and they stopped making them so I knew I couldn't get any parts to replace it if I ever wanted to so I know I'd kind of have to hand machine that which I wasn't about to do. So I decided to go with this centrifugal clutch because I knew the torque converter had this belt drive for friction rather than ceramic on metal and I wasn't very familiar at the time but I thought just from basic sense that all that friction on a belt was going to make me have to replace the belt a lot of times. So I'd have to unscrew the pulleys, which would wear out the threads after screwing and unscrewing so many times, replacing the belt, and I thought it was just going to be a big hassle. But as soon as I did the first test ride with the centrifugal clutch, I started noticing a bunch of kind of jitteriness. And when I, as soon as I switched to torque converter, I noticed it was a nice smooth start. So I'm gonna play two clips of the torque converter and the centrifugal clutch from a dead stop start on the motorized bike that I built. hard to see the specific differences in those videos just because I know I mounted the GoPro on the handlebar of the bike pointing down and the engine is going to vibrate so it might have looked shaky in both but you'll just have to trust me when I say the torque converter was a much smoother faster start than the centrifugal clutch. I mean I could barely get the bike started and it would just jitter and shake and it just wouldn't engage. So now I'm going to explain why it wouldn't engage and why I switched to torque converter and why I'm having a lot better luck with that. So the first thing I noticed when I disassembled this clutch after having really jittery, horrible starts is that there were a bunch of metal shards kind of around this outer ring here. So I thought I completely shot the bearings and it started being really shaky. You can hear all that clicks and stuff. That's basically this plate just moving forth and it just sounds really grindy and really terrible quality. So I contacted the company to see if they could send me another one. And sure enough, they did send me another one and I tried it and I even lubricated the bearings and did the whole shababble that everyone says you should do to make these things last a long time. And it literally just stopped working within like less than a mile of riding the bike. The bearings completely shot, it was just really shaky, and I was like, God, I just hate the quality of these things. So this clutch was about 25 bucks, and I was like, all right, is there a company that makes a more expensive, nicer version? And there was. There is companies that make better versions of these clutches with the same size axle, but they are ridiculously expensive. I mean, we're talking like over 300 bucks to get like a nice quality more like dirt bike, mini bike clutch that just has a lot better ratings, better bearings, and all of that. So basically I was like, all right, the quality of this thing sucks. Unless I go spending a bunch of money, I'm not gonna have good luck with this centrifugal clutch. So then I started looking into the torque converters. First of all, my requirements for buying a torque converter was that the radius, the inner bore of the first pulley was gonna fit over the engine shaft and that the rear sprocket of the second pulley was going to line up with the rear sprocket of my wheel. And when I was initially looking around at torque converters, uh, a lot of the sprockets are right behind this rear pulley. 
which is not going to line up with my rear sprocket. So I did have to get this one custom made for motorized bicycle. And it basically has a custom shaft that goes all the way through to allow this sprocket to be on the back side of this metal plate to line up with my rear wheel. And when I found this, it's about 220 bucks. And I know that's kind of getting a little high in the price range, you know, close to buying a good quality centrifugal clutch. But I'll explain why I love it so much in just a minute. So in terms of uh, the initial reaction to putting this thing on, uh, the starts were super smooth. Just the way this belt was able to tension and lose tension and everything, just no rattling, absolutely smooth. There's no bearings or anything in here, so not much to wear out or go wrong. And the initial things that people were saying when uh, I was reading reviews and stuff was that this plate could snap under the uh, tension. And I have never had that happen, but that might also be because I am using a 212cc rated torque converter on a 120cc engine. So I'm not putting a whole bunch of tension and completely stressing this metal plate here. But these parts are most likely made in China. This isn't the highest quality torque converter by any means but it has been amazing. And in terms of the belt wearing out, which was one of my initial fears with going with the torque converter, um, I have basically about 500 miles on this engine already. And this belt has shown like very little signs of wear and tear. All right, there's a little bit of rubber dust uh, from some of the accelerations and everything. I live in the mountains. I've been on this thing with two people and this belt has just been absolutely great. So you could definitely count on these belts lasting you for over a year. And the company even sent me an extra belt in case this one had any problems. So definitely the belt does not wear out as fast as I initially thought. It's pretty good. Uh, the only other problem I have had with this is that uh, this right here used to be a lock nut that came with the torque converter and the company manufactured this shaft a little bit too short, should have been a little bit longer. So the lock nut wasn't able to exactly grab onto it with the nylon uh, like it was supposed to. So that vibrated off on the road and I had to go to the hardware store and just get a thin nut with a lock washer. And that has been absolutely great ever since. So in terms of my initial thought, I like the torque converter a lot better. I probably could have gone with the expensive centrifugal clutch and had it work. But when I was able to have the changing gear ratios when the belt speeds up, I was able to gain about seven miles an hour faster uh, with the torque converter. So I was just really happy with it. And I had a lot of power. I can go dead stop, start right up a really steep hill and everything. And this thing has just been great. I have not had anything snap or break. And yeah, so I'd definitely go with the torque converter if you have a little bit of a higher budget. And if you don't, the center fuel clutch kind of worked. But basically every time I started it up, this whole engine would just be insanely shaky and I really could not just have a nice smooth start. So I was about to give up, but when I found this thing, definitely worth it. And I would absolutely go with the torque converter if you have a choice and if your engine will fit it. And most all the engines will fit these torque converters, uh, even the Honda clones and other things like that. You don't have to get a real Honda. Um, so yeah, my initial thought is that the torque converter is the way to go. All right, so that sums up this video. If you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe and check out my other bike videos. They're pretty cool and full of useful information. Uh, I hope I covered a lot of the basic details on comparing a torque converter and a centrifugal clutch. But if you guys feel I missed out on anything or have any other questions, please comment down below and I will try and answer those as best I can. Um, another thing I wanted to mention before I conclude this video is that I've been thinking recently about switching my channel to include some more vlog style videos and other types of content. I do do a lot of things and I know I've previously included a lot of music and things, but building stuff can get very expensive when you don't have sponsors and you're paying for all the materials. So I will still keep this up because I love building things. But if any of you guys have made it through the end of this video and you have any other suggestions or content you would love to see on this channel, be sure to comment below on any of your suggestions and I would love to see those and include some of your guys' input. So with that, I will see you next time.